Today's Gospel tells us the story of Jesus cleansing the temple of Jerusalem. Jesus went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast, a big Jewish celebration that brought pilgrims from around the world to the city of Jerusalem. People traveled far and they could not bring animals for sacrifice, and so they bought them in the temple. They used different coins from the Roman Empire, which had to be exchanged for the temple currency. A pilgrimage to the temple was meant to be a sacred time, but that was destroyed by the atmosphere of the temple where all this buying, selling, and currency exchange were taking place. At the Passover, the temple became a shopping mall. Merchants were selling animals for the sacrifice and money changers were exchanging currency at high rates. When Jesus saw this, he became angry. What does the cleansing of the temple tell us? It tells us about two things. First, this reminds us that anger as a natural human emotion that we all experience at some point in our lives is not a sin per se. It is part of our humanity. Who would not get angry at the wrongdoing done to us and our family? For example, killing or hurting a member of our family, land grabbing, destroying our properties, and trespassing in our home. This kind of anger is just. In fact, it is more damaging to our character. If we feel no anger in the face of such evils, thinking that everything is fine. As followers of Christ, we can learn from His example and strive to emulate His righteous anger when faced with injustice, oppression, and sin in the world. Anger becomes bad and sinful when it is repressed and allowed to flow into destructive actions like violence or any form of revenge. It becomes unrighteous anger when rooted in selfishness, pride, and malice. We must watch over our anger if it is not proportional or equal to what caused it, so that a minor mistake by others does not trigger intense anger within us. St. Paul has a very important reminder. In his letter to the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, St. Paul said, If you are angry, let it be without sin. Second, Jesus cleansing the temple was a sign of the purification that Jesus would like to bring to humanity. John and the other disciples saw Jesus' action as fulfilling a prophecy about the Messiah cleansing the temple. Just like the temple needed deep cleaning, our lives sometimes need a similar fresh start. That's what Lent is for. A time to clean up our lives like we clean our home and our offices. Over time, we gather unnecessary things and clutter, like in our closets. Initially tidy, closets start to fill up with extra hangers, unwanted gifts, old boxes, and items we plan to discard later. Maybe the temple faced a similar situation. One extra merchant arrived, then more followed, and soon it felt like a busy marketplace. Just like our closets and the old Jerusalem temple got crowded, our lives can also get cluttered unexpectedly. Many of us lead a very busy lives. Do we still make time for our children? Do we still make time for prayer? We need to tidy up spiritually. There are things in our lives that need to be removed, like imperfections that turn into sins, small neglects that grow into big problems, self-centered thought that led to ignore others, and temptations that led to bad actions. Lent reminds us to do some spiritual cleaning. We should clean our hearts thoroughly, like Jesus did in the temple, by removing all our wrongdoings, sins and distortions, not just wishing them away. That's why we have the grace of this season of Lent to help us clean out the temple of our lives, to make them a place where Christ is at home and not a stranger. Is Christ at home in your life? 
or does he seem to be an intruder? Lent is a time to be dramatic and decisive, to drive out the sin, the spiritual debris, and the clutter in the temple of our lives, and make room for Christ. The picture of Jesus cleansing the temple of Jerusalem is a reminder of what we should be doing to sin in our life. And this is Salita ng Diyos, ang ating gabay. And may the Almighty God bless you and your family, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.